Hey guys, uh, while cruising a junkyard the other day, I found a fairly late model uh, classic Saab 900 and uh, kind of miraculous, the distributor was uh, fully intact. Usually the electrical connection uh, here on the edge is broken uh, or otherwise incapacitated, but this one was in good shape, so I went ahead and grabbed it. Uh, before using it on a car, I wanna be sure that it works, and I thought since I was testing this, that it might be a good opportunity to kind of give an overview of a, a quick way to test a distributor if your car won't start or uh, if you happen to have a spare or uh, just trying to figure out what sort of condition it's in. Uh, the steps involved are pretty straightforward. I'm doing this on the bench, but you could do it on a car. Um, I'll show you what I've got here and how it kind of relates to what you'd see on a car. So the first thing I've got here is a uh, adjustable regulated power supply. So I'm going to be using this to power the whole setup uh, instead of the car's battery. Uh, I've got a multimeter, um, which I will use to verify that the output of the hall sensor is proper. Uh, I have an ignition control module. Um, this is uh, a module from a turbo car that does not have dwell control. You could use one from one that does have dwell control from a non-turbo car. It really doesn't matter for this purpose. Uh, functionally, they're the same. Uh, if this was on a car, uh, you'd find this at the front left corner of the car behind the corner light. Um, they're not prone to failure, but uh, every so often they do. It's not a bad idea to have a spare around. Um, and finally, we have the distributor itself. Uh, inside the distributor, um, what we can see is a few things. Uh, first, this little guy right here is the hall sensor itself. It's one half of it. The other side is uh, on the other side of this metal disc. This metal disc is called a shutter wheel or an aperture disc, depending on whether uh, you're Saab or uh, the rest of the universe. Uh, that's kind of a dig at Saab, but whatever. Uh, the key component of the shutter wheel is, uh, you can see these little openings here. Um, this guy out of the way. I see these openings here. Um, as it passes across the hall sensor, it's uh, the hall sensor can now communicate across itself. Now it's blocked, now across itself. Uh, as the shutter wheel spins, uh, that changing um, open and closed uh, changes the output voltage of the hall sensor. And that's actually how the ignition system works. As the voltage goes up and down, the ignition system knows that the engine has passed a, another rotation. It knows when to fire a cylinder, et cetera, et cetera. So the hall sensor in these guys is actually prone to failure after all these years. So that's, that's often the, the reason why your car doesn't start. Um, so this test may help you isolate the problem to a hall sensor. So I'll show you what this looks like in practice, and then we can talk a little bit more about how you can implement this uh, on a car. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn this power supply on, uh, running at 12 volts, which simulates the battery. We're going to turn our multimeter on and we're going to set it to DC volts and uh, that's really it. So the uh, regulated power supply is now powering the ignition control module which is powering the hall sensor and the hall sensor uh, through these two multimeter probes is uh, being read by my multimeter. So what I can see here, um, I'll show you again what this looks like. So the hall sensor when it's blocked like this uh, has a low voltage output and as it passes this way, you'll see a high voltage output. So as the motor spins around, we go low voltage, high voltage, low voltage, high voltage. So here's what that looks like. So right now it's unblocked. So I have high voltage, which uh, according to Saab specs is greater than eight volts. And I've got over 10 volts, so this is great. Uh, I'll spin it a little further. Now it's blocked and voltage drops. It should drop below uh, three volts. In this case, uh, we're down into the hundreds of millivolts. So this is great. Uh, I'll keep spinning it and we can see it rise. Whoops, we can see it rise. And we can see it fall. And we can see it rise. And we can see it fall, et cetera, et cetera. So this means the hall sensor is working. It also uh, means the ignition control module is working. So basically, if this was on a car, I would have a fully working ignition system. Um, so if this was on a car, the easy way to test this actually is to go ahead and connect your multimeter probes. Um, up to the ignition control module. You only need to probe two places. One is uh, the blue wire, which is right here. It's uh, terminal one. You can pull this little boot off and back probe. Uh, you can also uh, grab this over by the uh, ECM on uh, the passenger footwell. Uh, you'll see it on terminal one. You can also grab it at the tachometer itself. Um, the easiest place to do it for this test is obviously right here at the ignition control module pull the boot off and back probe right in here uh, to terminal one. The only other thing we need to do is uh, we just ground the negative probe and we're done. Uh, if the motor spins, uh, we'll see that rising and falling voltage. 
the problem that I think a lot of people are going to have these days is that uh, we've all got digital multimeters. In the old days, you would find a analog multimeter, the needle would bounce around and everything would work really, be visible really easily. But most multimeters these days are auto ranging and they don't refresh fast enough so you can't really see that bounce. The easiest thing to do, a great way to test this, is to simply disengage the distributor from the camshaft. And you can do that by removing the 13 millimeter bolt that holds the distributor in and just pulling it straight out uh, just a tiny little bit. All you're trying to do is disengage uh, this guy right here from the camshaft. So that distance is the only, uh, is just as far as you need to pull the distributor away from the engine. Once the distributor is disengaged from the camshaft, you can do exactly what I did, which is uh, spin the rotor by hand. And by spinning the rotor by hand, you'll see your voltage uh, bounce up and down. So again, we've got uh, hall sensor unblocked and we see high voltage, hall sensor blocked, we see low voltage. Uh, and that's really a full test of uh, the hall sensor itself, your wiring and your ignition control module. Um, I hope this visual kind of helps people. I know I struggled with this uh, for a really long time, um, but uh, it's, you know, this stuff was engineered in the late 70s and early 80s. It's really quite simple by today's standards. Uh, anyway, I hope this helps everyone.